Stand and help us recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Call the roll. Commissioner Hightower. Here. Commissioner Webb. Here. Commissioner Goss. Here. Mayor Ranella. Here. Okay, pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given of a special meeting of the Marion City Council, which will be held in the Council Chamber, City Hall, 1102 Tower Square, Marion, Illinois, at 6.30 p.m., Monday, February 5th, 2018, for the following purpose. One, Council approval of hiring Zach Holmes, the Street Department of Labor, to fill a vacancy of wage benefits as stated in Labor's contract 773, contract dated 2015 to 2019, and number two, council approval of appointment of new commissioner to fill the vacancy created by appointment of Commissioner Anthony Rinello to mayor to mayor upon the retirement of Mayor Robert L. Butler. Does anybody have anything they want to uh, address the council with prior to getting started? Okay, hearing none, Commissioner Goss. Yeah, uh, number one, I, my motion to hire Zach Holmes as the new State Department of Labor to fill that vacancy. And uh, as you say, it's according to contract. This is not a new hire. It's a replacement for someone we've already in the budget, Angelo. I'll second that. Yeah, okay. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the floor? Hearing none, call the roll. Commissioner Hightower? Yay. Commissioner Webb? Yay. Commissioner Goss? Yay. And Mayor Vanella? Yay. Yeah, I might add that the start his, uh, his employment as of the 15th, Monday the 15th. 12th. 12th. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A week from now. Yes. Got it. Gotcha. You got that, Alice? I yes. Have it. Okay. Uh, and getting this this going, uh, I, I, I one question I, I need to ask is all of you that have submitted for this position are all of you residents of the city of Marion? Yes. Okay. All right, now, in fairness to the other, you don't have to do it. This is an open meeting, uh, and we, we want to be transparent here. But I would like for all six of you to go outside, and we call you in one by one to make your presentation to the council. You don't have to do that. That's entirely up to you. But my, uh, my thought behind this is, if six is listening to one through five, and five is listening to two through four, you know, they're going to hear what other people say. And I just think in fairness to, to everybody, you know, be yourself and, uh, and, and present yourself to the council. You will have five minutes. I have a timer. Doug, you know what that timer's for. The egg timer. Yeah, I got the uh, timer. The only bad thing about it, if I just spent probably 50 more cents, it would ding at zero. <laughs> but I didn't. So anyway, uh, it, you know, it's up to you guys. You, you don't have to, but I think in fairness to your other uh, uh, candidates, uh, it, it would be the right thing to do. Mr. Patton, you can stay. You're first up. Jack, you will be second. No, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that could be one strike against you. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Doug, you let me know when you're ready. Is it okay if I move this to the left? Yes. Okay. When you're ready. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Rinello, honorable members of the City Council, and members of the voting public. My name is Doug Patton, and I reside at 800 East Gregory here in the great city of Marion, Illinois. I come before you tonight to express my sincere interest in being appointed to the vacant city council seat 
that has been created by the retire retirement of Mayor Bob Butler. I've been a resident of Marion for over 50 years and have enjoyed being a part of this community. Contributing to some of that enjoyment and fulfillment has been raising my family here and being involved in many community, being involved in the community on many different levels. I've been fortunate to be able to serve on several boards and organizations throughout my life, including a term on the city council from 2011 to 2015. During that term, I'm proud of what we accomplished and the direction we led the city. It also gave me the opportunity to learn the structure of our city government and understand how the different departments contributed both individually and collectively to the overall function of City Hall. I was able to work successfully with all the different departments and still today enjoy the professional and personal relationships that I built with the individuals of those departments. I graduated from high school in 1978 and Southern Illinois University in 1982. I have a broad background in construction, road and bridge work, acquiring land for road, infrastructure, and development projects, and negotiating contracts and agreements. I have assisted local agencies, including Marion, with land acquisition activities and business relocations on many state and federally funded projects. I have over 20 years experience as a negotiator for the Department of Transportation and Land Acquisition. I understand budgeting and the need to live within our means. I believe that my education, experience as a former city commissioner, as well as the knowledge I have gained as a 25-year employee of the Department of Transportation, I would be an asset to this council in making competent, meaningful decisions. It was a privilege to serve with Mr. Goss and Mayor Lamella during my previous term on this council. I've known Mr. Webb and Mr. Hightower for many years. And I'm eager to exchange thoughts and ideas with all of you to lead the city of Marion into the future. We've experienced tremendous growth under Mayor Butler's leadership, but I firmly believe that Marion has not yet reached its full potential. The decisions this council make affect almost every aspect of our lives. It's a huge task and should not be taken lightly. If selected, I will always stand up for what I believe in and will work hard to gather the pertinent information necessary to make well thought out recommendations and decisions. I believe in the importance of compromise and collaboration. And I will work tirelessly to make our community a better, safer, and more prosperous city. Thank you for your consideration and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to serve the community once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hang on, Doug. Yes. Uh, questions? No. I yeah, I got it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. How you doing? Fine. This is kind of a uh, off-the-wall question, but it kind of gauges your honesty. <laughs> uh, what grade would you give the Marion City Council and why? Wow. Can I answer that after you used to say <laughs> On a scale of what, one to 10, one to five? Yeah, either is fine. All right, let's go one to five. I'm gonna say probably a four. Thank you. I think there's always room for improvement. Yeah. Anyone expand on that at all? Or? Not at this point, no. A few more. Um, you, you kind of answered this in your opening statement. Uh, I'll just ask again. It's somewhat redundant, but uh, it's what major strength do you possess and that would be of utmost benefit to the council? In my day-to-day -day job with IDOT, I go out and I meet with property owners on a daily basis, um, what we call cold calling. Uh, you go up and you knock on the front door and you say, hi, I'm from the Department of Transportation and we're here to help. And nine times out of ten, they don't like that. Um, it has allowed me to think on my feet. 
um, find a common ground that we both have and get them to um, realize that this is going to be a win-win for everybody. We need the property to build the improvement. They don't want to give it up. So it's always a challenge to reach that agreement. And, and using that in the city council scenario, I feel like I would be a good um, negotiator. I feel like I would be a good um, person that thinks things through, speaks before, um, or thinks before speaking. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I have an open mind and I will listen to all sides of the argument uh, and then make a decision based on the information that I've gathered and the information that has been presented as well. And Mayor, if you were indulge me with one more, I promise one more. Well, I got a question. Go ahead. Uh, what would you do if the overwhelming majority of the council, that is four members out of five, were, were about to take action which you strongly disagreed with? You kind of answered that in your opening statement. You're kind of a mind reader, I'm starting to say. <laughs> Uh, Any time you serve on this council and it's a four to one vote, three to two vote, doesn't really matter. You always have your opinions. Um, and I think I hit, it, hit on it a little bit in, in what I had to say. There is compromise and there's collaboration. And you always have to take a step back from your personal feelings or, or maybe a personal agenda and say what is going to benefit the whole better than my beliefs or my stance. And I think as long as you keep that in your heart, whoever it is up here would, would, would be fine and do fine. Um, it's all about compromise and collaboration. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks, Doug. And, you know, and, and <clears throat> you're right there. You know, at at the end of the day, you know, we we got to keep our own personal beliefs, our own personal beliefs, and do what's best for the city of Marion. Absolutely. Um, I agree with you 100 percent there. Okay, uh, as commissioner, what was your what 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 do you think your, your some of your your finest or your couple of your finest achievements were as that you've seen seen through and uh, become reality for the city? Well, I think, I think my biggest accomplishment um, was the um, recreation center, the Hub Recreation Center. Um, I was kind of spearheaded that whole project. Um, I didn't get to see it all the way through because my term ended right before uh, it opened, but I was involved in the day excuse me, day-to-day -day operations of uh, the construction process. That was fun, um, very trying at times. Um, Gail and I had a lot of uh, late-night conversations about direction and, and uh, you know, us as well up here on the city council board, or our city council, we, we, we had discussion on what is the right direction to go. And, and I think I commend the council and, and, and the mayor for for approving it, and and you know that's that's sometimes what people fail to realize is just because I was the head of a project or or the city spokesman for the for the project or or that person that had the the boots on the ground for the city doesn't mean that everything that goes right is is my credit and everything that goes wrong is my credit we collectively as a council voted to um, implement that whole project and we as a council should take um, uh, take um, responsibility for the things that are right and the things that are wrong. So collectively as a council we should do that. But getting back to the original question, I think probably the, the rec center was, was probably a, the, the highlight of my, my term up here. All right. Any other questions? Nope. Jimmy? Uh, Doug, I guess, uh, of course you were 
already served one term, but your shift schedule or your work schedule, are you out of town much with your job at IW? No. If, if I'm out of town, it's usually two or three days in Springfield, uh, but never never longer than that. Um, I get back in town from Carbondale at 4 o'clock, so I usually made it a point swing by the city hall here and check on things or pick up mail or do whatever. I do a lot of work at night at home, so I send a lot of me emails after 8 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doug. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Jack Reed. He's our sergeant at arms. Oh, literally. <laughs> he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey. Jack. Jack, when, when, when you're ready, just nod and I'll put you on five minutes. And you can start any time. Okay. Go. I'm Jack Reed. Um, I've been a resident of Marion since 1968. All of you know me. A um, couple of you almost for 50 years. Um, my education, I graduated from Marion High School in 1973. I also a graduate of John A. Logan College and Southern Illinois University, both which associates in applied science degrees. I'm also a graduate of Western Illinois University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in a public administration field. My work history, I was employed by the City of Marion Fire Department from July 1980 until my retirement from service in August of 2014. I was appointed chief of the department in June of 2009 and served in that capacity until my retirement. During my employment as fire chief for the city of Marion, I served two years on the executive board of the Illinois Fire Chiefs Association. I was designated as a representative of the city to FEMA during the recovery from the tornado of 1982 and worked in an administrative role after the derecho in 2009. Um, during that time period, I also served as a commissioner on the Marion Park District from September 2013 to 2000, uh, June, June of 2014. I currently hold the position of Director of Parks and Recreation for the Marion Park District. I uh, accepted that position in September of 2014. I have oversight over the daily operations and staff of the Park District. In addition, I developed the fiscal year budgets for the district. Since my appointment as Director of Parks and Recreation, I have overseen several capital improvements. Farrow's Way Disc Golf Course at Pyramid Park, new playing surfaces to all the ball fields in Ray Fossey Park, and the Bart Park, our newest venue in Russell Street Park, to name a few. I will be involved in the near future this spring in some capacity with the creation of Heartland Regional Medical Center Inclusive Playground, a $400,000 inclusive playground to be located in Ray Fossey Park. In addition, I secured a $200,000 Harrison Bruce grant for the renovation of the tennis courts at Russell Street Park. We also have uh, on the board uh, creating a beach volleyball and bags venue, a, a $75,000 complex that will be located in Ray Fossey Park as well. These were all made, all those capital projects were made possible by refinancing outstanding bonds to cut an interest rate in half and capture almost $490,000 for capital improvement money for the park district. This was an initiative that I brought forth to the Park Board of Commissioners. I have also drafted multiple resolutions and ordinances, not only in my capacity as fire chief, but also as the director of parks and recreation for the park district. I've worked, my work history has included retail sales, construction, and tourism. I volunteered as a baseball and softball coach with Marion Youth Baseball, and I've worked also on a Habitat for Humanity project here in Marion. I'm certified by the Attorney General's Office as the Freedom of Information Officer for the Park District, and I'm also certified by the Illinois Attorney General's Office in the Illinois Open Meetings Act. I have extensive knowledge in public boards, developing budgets, labor relations, and contract negotiations in the public sector. 
I've negotiated labor agreements from both labor and management perspectives. Considering my years of service to the city of Marion, I have a great knowledge of the departments, the current staff, and the workings of the city of Marion. Currently, um, your fiscal year is coming to an end, so a, a new commissioner in this role will, will be heavily involved in whatever department they would be uh, in charge of in that budget process. Um, I'm confident that all of these aforementioned factors uniquely qualify me for an interim seat uh, that you would choose. And I think that I can fulfill those obligations with little or no learning curve. and. Um, some things I'd like to would like to see. I'd like to see continued growth in the city, economic development, industry distribution, specialty retailing that enhances retail sales of established retailers, retailers, and tourism. I think the city should continue to expand the technology to improve services for the citizens and city staff. When the city staff has more technology, the citizens will, are, will be able to enjoy that with the improved delivery of services to our citizens. Time. Very good. Right on the button, buddy. Right on the button. <coughs> okay, you. Uh, it's really hard for me because I've we've been we've known each other since the day you moved to Marion, but uh, we've worked together for thirty plus years. Uh, and you named your strengthens uh, as a uh, in in your in your job capacities. Yeah. Um, where, where, where do you where do you feel that, and you could take those strengths and bring them to the city? Well, I think immediately I can bring them to the city in the budget process. Well, you're going to get started in that. Um, new commissioner would be would be put into that role to begin with to help their department heads. Um, also, I know you know I know I know the financial side of the city. I know how um, things are purchased. I know how the departments run. Um, have a good grasp of all the staff. So as far as you know, where I would be, or over what department I would be, I think that that's a big strength for me. But I also understand that the council is a policy maker. You had you had fantastic supervisors that run the departments. They don't necessarily need a commissioner for that oversight, but the, but they do need that voice to the council to be able to carry their departments forward. So it just increases the service deliverability to all citizens. Thank you. You answered one of my questions. I just okay. have two more for sure. you. Um, what grade would you give the Marion City Council and why? What grade would I give the Marion City Council? I think I would give the Marion City Council a B. I think overall uh, the intention is good. The the workability of the council is good. There's no doubt that there there are differences of opinions and and uh, I wouldn't say conflicts, but but there are personality differences. But I haven't seen anything in the recent years that would indicate to me that that folks can't come together sure. and discuss. Okay. And last one. What would you do if the overwhelming majority of the council, that is four members, were about to take action on an item in which you just totally disagreed with? I'd vote my conscience. Okay. Okay. I, w I would explain my I, ex I would explain my feelings. I would try to do as much fact finding as I could to state my position, but I'd vote my conscience. Yeah, okay. that's all I have. Uh, Jack, uh, do you foresee any conflict of interest? I mean, being on the with the Park District in the city. I know that's a separate board and separate tax levy and all, but um, no, I don't. Um, if uh, you know, there have been plenty. There have been several commissioners in the past that have worked for different governmental entities okay. that I'm sure the city had dealings with. You know, the only thing to do there is when it does come to a vote and just sit silent. Mm -hmm. You know, but that doesn't mean that I can't continue to do the job that I'm doing as a director of Parks and Recreation and also uh, do a job for the people of the city. Thank you. Anybody else? Jack, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Buddy. Buddy Sellers. <laughs> That'll be on tape. 
tape. <laughs> Spray your germs right here. Yeah. I, I just hope he's on Tamiflu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, you be yeah, I'm good. Okay. Buddy, uh, when you uh, when you're ready, uh, acknowledge and uh, I'll I'll put you on the timer. Okay, all right. Well, good evening. I just want to take a moment and thank you for this opportunity to uh, address the council for this vacancy. Um, I just want to take a little bit of time to uh, just tell you about myself. Uh, my name is Buddy Sellers. I'm 39 years old, and uh, I've been married to my wife, Andrea, for almost 13 years now. And together we have three children, uh, ages ranging from 10 to 6. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Marion, minus a couple of years living in Jackson, Tennessee, where I attended Jackson State Community College and played baseball down there. After graduating from Jackson State, I transferred to Southern Illinois University in Carbondale and graduated in 2003 with a Bachelor's of Science degree. Uh, last semester, I decided to go back to school, and I completed two economics classes at John A. Logan in preparation to enter a master's program in the future. Um, my work experience, I started working for the city of Maryland in 2003 at the cemetery department part-time while I was finishing up school. And in 2004, I got a full-time job with the city of Marion uh, street department, where I'm still currently employed. I do believe that that employment with the city would be a great asset if I was elected uh, to serve on the council because I know the inner workings of what it takes to do the jobs within uh, the labor force. And I think that that would help unify the labor force with what goes on up here at City Hall. I think it would uh, be a tremendous asset to the council to um, you know, just kind of help us all move in a unified direction to, to allow the workforce to, um, to see what's going on up here and to feel like they're more part of it and just move toward the same end goal, which is to make this the best city that we can make it. Um, so my desire to want to get involved in city government um, started back in 2013 when I started reading a lot of books on economics and I studied about classical economics and Keynesian economics and I just realized how much economics is a foundation for some um, government at all levels. And working for the city, uh, it just kind of opened my eyes to, hey, um, this stuff needs to be uh, taught, this stuff needs to be looked at and I, I just love economics and just how it deals with public policy. So I think that my interest in um, learning about economics would be a great asset to the city. I am a small government, um, I, that's, I, I'm a small government uh, type of person. I believe that um, government should do things that the private sector doesn't really do, um, like uh, street, sewer, water, cemetery, things like that. I think the city does a wonderful job at that. I'm, I'm so proud of, of the work that we do within the city in those areas, police and fire. It's just We have a really good public works department and police and fire department, so I'm very proud of that and want to see that continue. Um, I uh, am a uh, proponent of um, small debt. Um, that's something that um, I do in my personal life. I, I do not like debt at all, and I would love to see governments at our level, um, you know, focus more on paying down debt and spending less um, in order to um, help governments long term and to help the citizens. So that's pretty much where I stand on most of the issues. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, yes. Um, what grade would you give the city council and why? What grade? Um, as far as providing services to the public, uh, the essential services like what I'm involved in, street and, and public works, I would say an A. Uh, we do an excellent job in our public works departments and police and fire. As far as getting involved in some other areas, um, I would say a C. Um, I just feel like the city has expanded a little too much um, in the services they provide, and I would like to see that right in just a little bit. 
Could, could you expand on that? What, what services do you think the city is? Well, um, I, ran, I ran in 2015, and one of the services that I was opposed to was the hub. And, and I like the hub a lot. I like the idea of it. I think it's a great service to the community, but uh, my um, concern was the long-term expense. Of, of a facility like that and how it would affect the taxpayers long term. So I'm not, not opposed to the idea, but it was just a, a concern of mine that um, it, it would not be a good thing long term for the city. Okay, well what major strength do you possess that would be a, the utmost benefit to the city council? Okay, um, one thing that I've learned through taking my economics courses and studying economics is that you have to look at a situation from many different angles. And sometimes you have good intentions, but there are unintended consequences of those good intentions because there was not a lot of forethought put into um, the decisions made. And I feel that's a strength of mine to do research on, okay, what's the problem? How have other people other cities handled this problem, uh, what things do they do right, what things do they do wrong, and um, I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy doing research on uh, what's worked in the past, what could work in the future, what didn't work. So um, I, I think that would be a strong point of mine. Okay. And one more. Okay. If the council was about to <clears throat> perform some action that you were strongly opposed to, what would be your reaction to that? Um, I, I would speak my mind. I would tell the council what I thought and, and do it um, in, in a way that was respectful and, and in a way that was loving. You know, I, I wouldn't want to uh, be hateful but, um, with anyone. You know, I just want to show concern but still voice, you know, what I feel strongly about. Okay. See it for me. Buddy, okay. if you're chosen uh, for this position now, you would continue to work the street department. Is that would that be your plan? Yes, that, that would be my plan, and I did um, check with Mr. Ronella to see if that would, would be okay, and he assured me that that would would not be a problem. Thank you. Okay. No. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to let me do this. Monty Blue. whether I was tall enough to reach the microphone, so I'm okay. Well, it's adjustable because, you Thank know. You. Thank you very you much. Know. But did you stay inside instead of go outside? So. Yeah, I did. Okay. When you yeah. said that outside, I got a little nervous about that. Yeah, a little I mean, cool outside out there, the council chambers, I thought you could <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, it is an honor to be here. Um, I think a lot of people in here I know, or you know me, um, have a lot of respect for this community. I'm probably the only, me and my son are probably the only little boy blues ever born in Marion Memorial Hospital. So it goes way back 60 years ago that I was born here. Live and blue, live and die blue and gold. Um, done a lot in 60 years. I've been the privilege of being the coroner for many, many years. A few years ago, um, I owned my own business in town. I am now a funeral director, kind of a I do what I like doing now. I take care of families and I don't have to do some of the other, other administrative part of the business. Um, so that, I'm enjoying that. I'm the assistant volunteer and uh, baseball coach. And the only thing that does is make me have to buy the Tootsie Rolls for the kids. So it, that seems to be a pretty, pretty, I, I love doing that. Um, Mr. Goss was my baseball coach and, and uh, I really had some good times back in those days. and. And uh, when this became available, I thought, well, I'll just put my hat in the ring. And, and being the chamber president a few years ago in the United Way and president and some of the things that I've done in the past, I thought, well, uh, for a few months anyway, maybe I could give my input and listen. And, and I'm obviously in the funeral business. I'm pretty active in senior care and 
Uh, I think one of the biggest things I want to do is just protect our seniors in town. And not that they're not being, but just uh, really keep an eye on them. And if there's anything I can do as a commissioner to help the seniors, uh, I think that's something that I would really be interested in. And uh, with everything going on, and I know you've already addressed it, I'm sure in the police department, we've got a really good police department, make sure the kids are safe at our schools. And I listen pretty good. Um, I uh, have always tried to be a listener and more than a talker, so that's why I'm not very comfortable doing this kind of thing, but uh, um, just appreciate you considering me, and if I can help any way, I will. And I, one thing about it, I've talked to all the people that are up for this, and uh, you're not going to, whatever you do, it's going to be the right decision. You've got some really good candidates here, so uh, um, I won't have a problem with whoever you select. They seem to all be really... They like me, they love this city. And uh, um, just, uh, you got any questions or anything like that? Uh, I think most of you know me. Angelo's probably the one that doesn't know me the least, but uh, Jim and me go way back from churches and different things, and Goss and Renella. Uh, I even like him. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty good. It's got a sense so, <laughs> been around a long time in this town and love it, so I'll be glad to be, be honored to serve and, and uh, I don't know if that's what you wanted out of us, but um, just try to get your hat in there and go at it once you're appointed. Now, Monty, do you work full-time now? or you got, got Part-time. I have okay. flexibility. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's um, one of the reasons that uh, I was able to do what I do is just basically do what I did back in 1975 when I started in the funeral business, which is long, uh, would be Valentine's Day of 75 when I started, so that's coming up 43 years. So one of the things I got into the business was, was to take care of families and arrange funerals. And obviously when you own and you start getting away from some of that, and that, I've never been very comfortable about that part of it. And I, I am getting to do now what I originally started 43 years ago, and that's just being a funeral director and taking care of families and getting that through there. But I have a lot more flexibility. I'm, I'm able to, you know, not work as many nights and weekends and afternoons are off and just I just go and come when I'm needed and that's that's the good thing about it but I am very very flexible and I have to be being the baseball coach and because mm -hmm. uh, doing that you're gone quite a bit for that but I'm also a volunteer and I've already talked to Marty the head coach that I have a there's a fireman and fireman that's also a volunteer and when he's on duty I kind of go and went vice versa so very flexible there too I'm a volunteer so I can do pretty well whatever I want I just kind of help with the pitching staff and that's what I do yeah. for the baseball team thank you thank you Barney, we, we have a 42 million dollar a year budget and uh, uh, one of the biggest things that I pride myself on in my nine years as a commissioner is that we have lived within that budget every year. In fact, uh, uh, last year we cut $400,000 from that budget. Uh, you've been involved in budgets in, pri in the private sector and with the county. Uh, uh, can you delve on that a little bit about how, how important it is to the process and, and the, and the uh, welfare of the city? The budget. It's got to be done, and obviously, I'm sure you guys, along with me in the coroner's office, was I had a budget on how many autopsies I could do a year. Well, <laughs> it's kind of hard to stay in that budget if it's a year that you have a lot of, of, of need, where you've had a lot of things happen. So, but I was really pleased that most of the years I was really close on that. But you, yes, you had to work a budget with, as coroner, and obviously, if you're self-employed, you really have to have a budget. You've got to, you got to stay within your means. You've got to pay your bills. You've got to run your business, or like anybody that has a business is going to be there very long. So yes, I'm. Believe me, uh, chamber president. We had a budget. United Way. That was all. That was was a budget. Um, School things board. like that. School board. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. How to forget that? Uh, yeah, that's a big business. I'd help you out there. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, yeah. The school board. You yeah, know that was a that was a. And I really enjoyed that. I just, I just felt like that was something that, you know, the more you get involved, the more you understand when you folks are up here voting or discussing things. And that's the same way with the school board. I had no idea until I got on there some of the decisions they have to make. And 
gosh, it's just a shame everybody doesn't get a chance to do that because then you understand when people are making tough decisions and you're not, you know, you know, maybe people a little bit be a little bit more understanding when you make a tough decision if they were in your shoes and and that's something that I felt as chamber president and the United Way and the school board that it really helped and self-employed. You know how businesses in, in Illinois, that was pretty tough to stay within your means with that. But yes, budgets are very, very important and and uh, I'll do anything I can to make sure we stay within that, but also take care of the city. So, so you, you, you know, if you, we, and we don't know yet, we're getting ready to start the budget year. Uh, if we have to cut a half a million dollars from this year's budget to make it work, you, you don't mind doing finding the the places that we can and and make the necessary cuts to 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 have a balanced budget oh i think a balanced budget's got to be got to be done um you know i would before i just say oh yeah i just cut anything i i i think once i'm on there i'll have my opinion and uh, i will uh, make sure that i understand what we're cutting and figure out who it might Effect and how it affects them, and and um, I won't be a uh, I won't be an easy vote for one way or the other. I will do what I Monty Blue thinks is right, but thinks right. I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to say that. I'm, my language is not real good right now, but um, I will definitely believe that we need to stay within a budget and and cutting. If you can't pay for it, I had to do that at the funeral home. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I have no problem with that at all. So you wouldn't have a problem telling Goss no? Oh, not a bit. <laughs> so not know. a bit. He, he made me bat. He See, no, let's, he'd have me lead off for his team, and he would say, Monty, go up there and just get hit with a pitch, and you'll get on first base and we'll score. Take but I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter, John. Take one for the team. <laughs> take one for the team. <laughs> Well, he did. The winning run. Thank you. Let's well, don't brag. TV's here. <laughs> well, I have just a few questions. Yes, sir. First of all, what grade would you give the city council and why? What grade? Yeah. Oh, an A. <laughs> and the reason for that is, is I think you look around at some other towns and um, I think you disagree but agree. Um, there's nothing saying that you guys can't disagree on something, have your opinion, but I think you're gentlemen. You shake hands at the end of the day and you do what's right for this city. And to me, anybody that's doing the right thing for this city, which I love, gets an A. Um, you spend your time, you're doing this. I don't know if any of you are doing this to, um, you know, to get rich or whatever. You're doing this because you love this city like I love this city. So I, that's why I give you an A. Um, I think you're doing a great job. And that's, I mean, if you were getting a D, I don't think I'd be up here. I wouldn't be in the middle of this. So I think you're getting an A, and I'd like to be a part of it. What major strengths do you possess that would be of utmost benefit to the council? Um, I pride myself, and this sounds really arrogant, and I don't mean it this way, but I pride myself. I can't stand it when somebody doesn't like me. And I, I want to be liked by everybody, and I think that's a strength that I care for people in this business that I'm in. There's no fake in this. You either love people and you love taking care of them at the worst time of their life, or, or they they can read it. Or you don't. You won't get any funerals. You won't do any business. And obviously, by the volume we did, I was successful at that. And I think that's a strength of mine. Is I like people, and I think they like me. And uh, I think that'll help when people will feel comfortable coming to me and say, "Hey, can you check on that?" Or will you do that for me? Uh, um, you know, and I will. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to get on this thing and and say, oh, no, I'm not, you know, I, I, will, I will ask. I might not be the answer they want to get, but I will definitely uh, be there for the people. And kind of a good segue to my next question. Uh, it's like, what if the council was about to perform an action that you totally disagreed with and you knew we would be totally upset if you didn't come along with us on it? Um, too bad. Would that be a good word? Okay. <laughs> You're voting for me, and I will, you know, I, and I think that's why you guys are asking all of us. I, I might be the only vote against it, but I will definitely do that. I, I feel that these people, 
And, and you know, I, I realize too that you guys are appointing us. The, the, the main part of this is next year when the voters have a choice. That's what it's all about, the voters. I'm hoping just to help us out until the voters get that voice and uh, maybe be their voice until they can do that. But uh, yeah, I, I will definitely fight like the Dickens if it's something that I don't think is right and vote my vote. I'm a one vote guy and uh, just go from there. But, but unless it's just something crazy, I will shake your hand and we'll go to the next item of business right after that. So. All right, so yeah. Here. Anything else? One thing that uh, interests me, Monty, is that uh, uh, this takes a lot of time to be a commissioner. And uh, during the day, are you going to be available? Or are you going to be locked yes. in on certain hours? No, I, I'm... Times you, you need to be up... I'm uh, available on any time. Uh, I mean, if I had a large funeral that the family needed me at i'm pretty well advanced notice of that but no i'm i'm uh, my my schedule is flexible where if you need me at 10 o'clock i'll be there and then i might work a little longer the next day i mainly just go in and take care of the families and that's usually in the mornings and the funerals and things like that and i'm very very flexible and that's a good thing about our staff we've got such a good staff well some departments don't require much attention and some require a lot a lot and if you get assigned to one that I won't mention name, Tracy, but if you get assigned to one of them that might need a lot of attention, are you able to give it your full attention during the day? No, I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm probably the easiest person to get a hold of, that's for sure, and I am available to do that, and I probably know who you're talking about back there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> no offense, Tracy. No. <laughs> we, we, we can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a web bar. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Anything else, Monty? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dennis Ball. Mr. Ball, thank you for uh, coming tonight. Uh, as you know, uh, we've given every uh, other uh, candidate a five-minute span. I have a uh, clock here that will, uh, when you uh, tell me you're ready, uh, yes, then uh, you can... Uh, Tell us why uh, you uh, you want to be on uh, this council. So yes, sir. Well, are you ready? Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm Dennis Andrew Ball, and I'm here to fill this vacancy uh, from the retirement of Mayor Butler, or from the Mayor Butler. The reason I'm here is that there is opportunity for, I believe, uh, a little bit different perspective on how city government is run. Um, structurally, I believe the family unit is the issue in our culture at this time. Uh, it reflects in Marion years of heritage and change that has gradually brought about the conditions we experience today. Okay? Uh, I, I don't want to go into a lot of detail. The reason I proceeded to put this on writing was that the five points that I believe in has to do with a model that will work better in terms of solving problems and identifying them. Um, and I think the basis for that model is the family. Why, why do I say that? I say that because if you're not working for your family, who are you working for? 
I think that's an important question. I also think that in terms of proceeding with problems that the city has to uh, address, um, some of those problems has to do with streets, code enforcement, property taxes, creating citizen uh, awareness and family unity, uh, homeless shelters for winter, uh, wet weather, uh, public restrooms during the winter for homeless people, uh, runways during the summer for mowers, uh, for people who cannot afford to have their uh, lawns mowed, as well as uh, possibly employing prisoners uh, who are in the prisons to assist in that process, and also creating living wage jobs with skilled labor, educating young people uh, in manufacturing jobs to increase life uh, productivity and make it possible that a minimum wage will be unacceptable and that only living wage will have an opportunity to grow uh, uh, for uh, families. One of the problems has been, as we both know, that people who have gone to school and gotten a degree have left money because they can't make a living. Or they have to work two or three jobs. That's a lot of stress. And that needs to stop. Um, with respect to the council, I think one of the, the, the important things is that the council must review these problems. I mean, we've got an executive session who can do things openly too. So that would be good. If I'm on the council, I will listen a lot, more than I will talk. Uh, the other gentlemen who have been here, I'm sure have communicated what they will do. Uh, I'm a person who likes to learn and grow with the community. My personal life has been here for generations from my family. I know Mary, I'm one of you. Uh, my attitude is I would like to contribute to the welfare and best interests of Marion and make Marion even better to what Mayor Butler has done his last 55 years. So in terms of problems, they should be reviewed. Uh, solutions and proposals and appropriations for those problems to solve them should be uh, considered and then uh, proceeding from there uh, to create a better attitude on the part of the people who have their concerns and who are designing a change. I'm a person who believes in change for the best interests of millions of families. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I got one here. Uh, when you talk about living wage uh, jobs, uh, and we have people, we have businesses that uh, want to come to Marion. Uh, are, are you saying that you will tell them what wage they're going to pay to to come to Marion and provide sales tax revenue to this city? Um, I haven't been approached that at this time with that question until now. Yeah, I'm approached. Well, it's because you of what you said under living wage jobs which is all great. I mean, we sit up here, Mayor Butler sit up here, and we all said the same thing. You know, we would love to get something in here that paid a wage that was sustainable to raise a family. We love to. And in fact, let me let you in on a secret. We're looking every day. You know, we are looking every day for that. But at the same time, you know, to tell a business they have to pay a certain wage, uh, and, and maybe you misstated yourself, maybe that's, and, and, and if that was your intention, that's fine, but, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know that, you know, when, in, in, in a world of free enterprise that, that we have the right to do that. I mean, as long as they, 
live within the uh, uh, the uh, minimum wage laws of the state of Illinois. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know that we have the right as a council to, and we love for them too, but I don't think we have a right as a council to to impose too much government on them to to do that. Oh, I agree with that. I mean, is that, was that? No, my intentions are, if you're going to change this community to make it such that they can sustain themselves, you're going to have to introduce skilled labor. That means you're going to have to educate your young people through the colleges and encourage a work base to be created here that can do those jobs. And South Carolina created Boeing Corporation through a workforce that they educated through their colleges and universities. And that could happen here too. Southern Illinois, as a region, could develop its educational base so that those jobs are being filled from people here instead of them leaving the state. Right now, there is a budget crisis, there's a pension crisis. You're not going to tax it out, you're going to have to create revenue. That's the future, and that's the family. Hey, what grade would you give the city council and why? What grade? Well, I, I think that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I have not had the opportunity to really be as close to this council as I probably should have been. But uh, from what I can see here in the community, and based on the problems that I've listed, uh, I think there's room for change. Uh, so I will just leave it at that. Yeah, spoken like a true politician. <laughs> <laughs> What major strength do you possess that will be of utmost benefit to the uh, council? Well, I'm, a, I'm an author. I write books. And um, I have a degree from the University of California, San Diego, 73. Um, the realities are there are many subject matters that affect the family and children, parents, and grandparents. My strength is understanding the family is the basic unit of society. It is not subordinate to any other unit of society. It is the basis of society. Strong families produce strong communities, regardless of race, color, or creed. The family unit is indicative and indigenous to any group of people. We focus on the family, we create the best interests of the family, and we create jobs to sustain the family. Therefore, we have a strong community. Okay. And finally, uh, if the council was about to take an action which you just totally disagree with, what would be your reaction to that? I would have to go with the council's directive. I would not um, be an obstruction. But I will tell you this, change will come as ideas are created that okay. work. I mean, as a sitting council member, what would be your reaction? Or is that what you understood the question to be? It would depend on the question. So if you were a sitting council member and we were about to take an action that you totally disagree with, what would be your reaction? I would, I would have to table my reaction for the, for the greater good of the council. Uh, I, could, I could object, I could protest, and it could be uh, docketed in the record, but uh, that's why we have representative government. Uh, each one of us is an individual, we have opinions on everything, and that should be respected, and so should we. Yeah. So, I, I think what Commissioner Hightower was alluding to was, would you vote your conscience if, if, if we was getting ready to vote yay on something that you, you know, objected to strongly in your heart and mind. Would you vote with us? Say you're, you're sitting down there and you're the last vote. Would you vote with us or would you vote your conscience? It would depend on what the issue is. Okay, thank you. Anything else? No. Okay. Don Holman. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Thank 
hey, Don, you got five minutes like everybody else. You don't have to take those five minutes, and then we'll ask you some questions. You just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Okay, thank you. First of all, I'd like everyone to rise um, for a um, moment of silence for all the lost loved ones and everything. Don, I don't think we can do that. Okay. That's, that's a okay. violation of church and state, the, okay. the First Amendment. Is, am, I, am I right or wrong there? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, my name is Donald Holman. I would like, um, I would like opinion survey and um, uh, opinion surveys in the mail. Why would they like? Uh, I want the people. If I'm doing something wrong, I want the people to let me what, know what I'm doing wrong or right, just like the rest of the city government. And um, I want to hear from the people about that. And um, I would um, like to see uh, city transportation come here. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, once it's paid for, I mean, fundraising, there's lots of fundraisers that can happen. And then once you have a city transportation, I know we have rides, but sometimes they don't run. And um, the city transportation, um, you know, then people have another option. And um, once you get the, once you get it in, then you're going to get the funds from, from that. And then, um, like, um, City Marion has a city garbage pickup. Um, I want to see uh, Marion get a city garbage pickup. Um, contracted out. I don't know how. I never planned it out. And then, yeah, I just figure maybe as teamwork with the community and city council, as teamwork, maybe we could figure this out. Um, I appreciate Anthony saying the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Appreciate that. Um, just things like this. Um, I just like to get the people um, more involved with issues. Um, certain things people can't vote on every issue because it'd be it'd be a lot of issues to vote on. Important issues like taxes and, and like certain issues I think um ought to come to a referendum um, and let the people vote on it. And um, that's about all I have. Mm. Thank you. Um, I've been living in Maryland for twenty four years. Um, I've uh, I've got the I don't have a political experience. I've got the public experience. I worked with the public for well over 15 years, so I have the business experience and the public experience because I worked with retail for many years. Um, and I know when you know multitasking. I multitask well, and you need to multitask. You need to work as a whole. You need to work as a community. You know, you need to work as a family. Um, all of us, all of us would be considered family. Me and the rest of the city council, everyone here, I get along with everybody. No matter who is mayor, no matter who is city council, I get along with everybody. I would vote on issues according to if I thought it was right for the people. You just answered my third question with that statement. Huh? You just answered my third question I had for you. Um, but anyway, um, I thank everybody, and, and you know, wherever God leads me, wherever God leads all of us, wherever God leads me, that's where I'm going to end up. I'd like to congratulate everyone here, and I'd like to say you're doing a good job, and, and um, you know, I just <coughs> want to wish everyone the best of luck who's running next time, and I'd like to pray for, you know, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You're down. You, uh, yeah, you got one more question? Yeah, two more, actually. Don, what grade would you give the Marion City Council, and why? What grade? What, out of what? What grade out of what? You name it. A to, a to, a to F, 1 through 10. I mean, you, you take your pick. I'd give the Marion City Council the highest grade I could give them whether it's a 10 or whether it's a 20, because I think they've done a good job. Okay. All right. And what major strengths do you possess that would uh, be uh, the most benefit to the council? I've worked with the public, with the public for over 15 years. I've done odd jobs with elderly. I've helped elderly out, elderly people and neighbors out for free or real cheap. I helped women out for cheap, free, wearing the grass, doing whatever. There's no elderly women, especially. I was saying women who don't know how to run, who don't know how to run a lawnmower, or, you know, you, you wouldn't be surprised if you say they don't know how to run a lawnmower. <laughs> lawnmower's the easiest thing, but you may be surprised. 
That's all I have. Okay, uh, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, you know, this, we've had some interesting uh, uh, information given to us, um, some good information. Um, we have to keep this <coughs> open yes. for discussion. Uh, it's my uh, intention tonight to uh, to uh, fill this position uh, so the council can move forward. Uh, obviously, as mayor, I you know I cannot make a motion or second one, but uh, I'm I'm going to sit here and listen to the to the council and uh, give their uh, perspectives and on 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 these individuals, and uh, then we'll. When we're, we're done, we'll all entertain a motion to uh, see the new council member. Mayor, can I ask a question? Yes, sir, you may. Thank you. If there's a tie, how do you break the tie? There won't be. There, there won't, be, won't a be a tie. You got three votes. Three votes. So you got, oh, okay. So it's three votes. So three council commissioners. The two three commissioners are voting. Are you voting? Here? I, I will vote my conscience. I actually do not have a vote on the council, only in that of a tie, but I will I will let the people know my vote on any issue, on every agenda item, uh, how I feel by my vote. Okay. All right. Thank you. Should I have someone start? Well, I tell you what, this, this is going to be a tough decision. We have some uh, sure. pretty good candidates, a lot of experience. Uh, People like Doug, who's been on a council. Jack's been on different boards. Monty's got a rev experience. You know, Buddy, you know, has experience. He knows the inner workings of the city. I know those are, I mean, like, I think it was Monty who said we can't go wrong with uh, whoever we choose today. So I don't know if we're we going to do some kind of composite score and add it up and see who gets the most, or <laughs> we could draw straws. <laughs> no, I think we may uh, have to flip a coin. No, we know, have to pick. Uh, yeah, we, we got to pick. We have and, to pick, and uh, I, I, I have my my uh, decision, and well, it has nothing to do with uh, against anyone else. But we have to make a pick, and yeah. I, I prefer not having to make a pick. But we're in this position. And they're all good people. Well, I'll I tell you what, why don't we just sit here for a few minutes and, and I, I think Angelo's got a uh, a good idea. Why don't we... Uh, uh, one through six, weight them like one through ten, and yeah. let's yeah, say for just, example, yeah. Don Holman will give him a no. ten or whatever and add it up at the end. That's no. the fairest way to do it probably. No. I mean, instead of just arbitrarily saying, oh, I'll pick Buddy or something, you know. No, we have to vote. I, well, we yeah, we will vote. That, but, we'll, I mean, no, but, it's not going. But I think, you know, we had, uh, you got to agree, we had candidates that were stronger than others, and we need to give weight to those. And well, I think, I, I think we can. I appreciate that, and I agree with you, but everybody has to state who they want. And it's not a secret meeting or a, a vote here among ourselves. So I'm willing to voice who I want. I don't know how everybody else feels. But well, the composite will tell you who you want by how yeah. you weight them. Well, I don't know how you have a weight, how you do it. Somebody else. Can I interrupt you and ask you a question? You may. As a citizen. You sure. Sitting here tonight, this has been absolutely the most educational thing I've done in a long, long time. My name is Brenda Lawler, of course, and I owned We Three Girls for many years here in Marion. My concern and my question is, is who's going to step into this for the long haul? Because Marion has grown rapidly. And I personally love Monty Blue and have met Mr. Uh, Patton and knew who Mr. Reed was and the other gentleman. As a citizen and knowing that we're a year away from an election, are we going to have to do this again? No. And no. be the people's voice? Well, or, yes. You know, yeah. Are you going to have to do this no, again? No, no, no. This, this, this will last for 14 months until the election of April 2019. Next December, uh, well, actually before December, the uh, packets will come out, and the and those that are wanting to run for this office, 
the Office of Mayor will pick up those packets and follow the guidelines set forth by the county clerk. And, uh, and then those packets have to be in, I want to say... Before Christmas. Sometime. Yeah, yeah, sometime around the third Tuesday of the month of December. Now, and then after that, uh, I think uh, the, the city clerk mm -hmm. will at some point in time validate the candidates if, for their eligibility to be on the ballot. So this is going to... Two positions coming up or... No, the whole council. The whole council is coming up. Four, 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 council, four, council, council. four council mayor seats in the mayor. Okay. Everybody. So, you yeah. Job yeah. Yeah, and, and, and this big bucks. and this uh, and this is a very important election coming up for the city of Marion, right. because <laughs> you're going to have you're going to seat uh, an, an, a new elected mayor mm -hmm. and four council people. Well, and and, and, and those and, and and I guess what you're asking are are you asking these uh, candidates? To are they willing to stand? Or, or are they, are they selected and to fill this position? Are they, are, are, are they going to be here just for a temporary short period in time to say I filled this position? That's actually a fair question. That, that's a very fair question. Or I, am I willing to stand up and grab a hold of the reins with whomever else, since you all are going to be up, okay. and continue to pursue what the, 14, the past 14 months on this council has, has taught me and what I have contributed to the council? Okay, that's a fair question. Doug, what's your intentions? I think it's a very fair question, and <clears throat> it's always been my intention. I, I enjoy serving the public. Um, it, it, it is something that I want to do, not only for the next 14 months as it, on an interim basis, but I, I will also pursue a, a city council position in, in the future. Now, obviously, the voters will, will decide, decide. On, on whether I, I get to do that or not. Uh, but it's, it is my intention to, to uh, hopefully be appointed for this 14 month term or how long it is, and then the term run again the next election. Thank you, sir. No, no. Hang on. In order. In order. Jack? <clears throat> I haven't made that decision yet. Respectful. But it is my intention to focus. <laughs> and I set out about this Who was the third? knowing that you have to put it in the diet to begin with, and that's what we gentlemen are tasked with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buddy? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to run in 2019. I did run in 2015, and it is a very hard process. Uh, it took a lot of time with my family, and that would be something I need to talk to my wife and children about to see if they'd be willing to uh, allow me to, to do such a thing. But uh, that's why this would be a perfect opportunity to see if, if this would um, be something I'm gifted in. And um, if I enjoyed it, you know, I may get on there and, and not enjoy it. So this would be a great opportunity to see if, if that would be something I want to do. Yeah, we appreciate you guys' honesty. By yeah, way. yeah, and, 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 you're, and you're right. It it, it is a sacrifice. Yeah. And it, these all four of us can tell you that. Doug can tell you that. Anybody that's set on a board can tell you it's a, it's a sacrifice, and unfortunately, a lot of times a thankless sacrifice. But you know, we chose to be here. We were elected to be here, and uh, you know that's you know I think we're, we're all. In, you know, up here, can, you know, in the process of continuing. Uh, money, uh, money. I have every intention on running. Uh, like the rest of the folks, it's, you never know what's going to happen with health or your family right. or anything. Just yeah. like these, they're all running too. It's going to be everybody, which I've always felt like the school board. You didn't vote a whole new school board, and you have the potential of that happening with the city yeah. council. I've always felt. I was kind of wondering about that, why we didn't maybe go a couple in one year and a couple in the next, or the next two, but anyway, long story, yeah, yeah. I, I have every vision of that. Yeah, well, we're, we're just, we're a commission form of government, and, and under state statute, that's what it, it, it dictates for us to do. Okay. Teachers always hated the staggered elections, by the way. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Ball, what's your intentions? Oh yes, uh, I have declared for mayor for uh, 2019. 
so he won't run. Um, as I said today, I've more or less given my philosophy. I think uh, this is an important and honorable position as councilman uh, to fill. And uh, I just believe that we are in a position now to make history, and we should. Okay, so in, in, in fairness to everybody else, and you won't run for council. No. But you will run for the position of mayor. Yes. Okay. Don? Yes, I'll, um, I'm going to be a candidate for 2019. Okay. For okay. Um, and um, also, um, I think uh, security needs schools. Security needs schools is a must. You know, I think that every hour on the hour, um, it's captured by BG through there. And I think if you park when the school starts, if you park at the school, the front of the school, back at the school. And you know, you know, all the cars are gone, and kids are in the school. You know, because things are going on, it's just, I just think that we need to make this a priority. Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, excellent question, Brenda. Well, yeah. I think that gives some, some more insight. Um, well, I mean, taking it from there, I mean, I, I appreciate you guys' honesty, yeah. buddy. Uh, but it kind of makes our decision oh, easier. Yeah. Because we kind of want. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Because we want someone who's going to kind of continue. Yeah. Uh, and so basically, it's between Doug and Monty. And, and I've worked with Doug. I've seen him in action. Uh, he has a good temperament, good judgment. Uh, he was on the council before. Um, I, I just believe that he'd probably be the better choice. Nothing against Monty. If Monty were to get it, I will welcome you with open arms. But my choice would be Doug. Okay. I want to discuss again. Okay, I want to express my appreciation for all these guys that showed up. Um, most of them got really good qualities. But in my opinion, uh, Monty Blue is the best fit. He brings a vast amount of experience with the public. He served uh, for many, many boards. Uh, the big thing that I really like about him is that he will be available at all hours any day. And some of these, some of these uh, departments require mornings, they require early afternoons, and some people can't be here. And no, nothing against that. But he is available, and I think that's highly important. Uh, he's owned and operated a business for 40 years. In the city, there's not hardly any more complex business in town than the city of Marriott. And him being a business owner, he understands the balance of budget, he'll bring it to the council. Uh, he's a people person, and I know of nothing that reflects adversely on his character. And if it comes down to the motion, I'd make a motion that we appoint Monty Blue. And that's no disrespect to the other candidates. We have some excellent people. But that would be my motion if it comes to that point. Can I just add something, though? <clears throat> Doug, you were on the council for four years. In those four years, how many times did you have an emergency that you had to hurry up and shoot the city hall? I always made myself available, um, you know, whether it be sick time, uh, vacation time. I took I took time off to be here when I was needed, mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's a um, personal choice. Uh, you can be available, or you can choose not to be available. I always chose to be available, and uh, in, in my four years, I don't ever remember where there was an emergency where. I it doesn't have to be an emergency, though. Uh, well, uh, you know, it no. Day to day, day to day, operation. How many annual budgets did you balance while you were on the uh, city council? One every year, so I was here four years. Okay. Okay. Jim, I'd just like to say that I appreciate everybody coming in, and this has got to be nerve-wracking <laughs> to do an interview in front of this many people. So, uh, you all did admirably well. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, it's a tough decision. I know. I know some of you guys pretty good, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and second Johnny's motion. Okay. I actually hadn't called for a motion yet, but uh, well, I thought he. Oh, made a motion. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. I just thought you was reading off a piece of paper there. I'm sorry. I couldn't read my writing, Anthony. Oh. I guess that pretty much settles it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I gotta say something and. Uh, uh, I'm glad I'm not in E3's position because I could definitely live with 
Doug, I can live with Monty, I can live with Jack, Buddy, I don't, you know, I don't know Mr. Ball, uh, uh, Don, you lack experience, uh, and, and I see, I, I understand that, but, I, I, I understand that, but there's, there's any of these guys up here, Doug can tell you, Jack can tell you, Monty, this is, government is complex. Yes, it, it is, is very complex, and it takes a lot of understanding of a wide variety and range of topics, from from uh, uh, Illinois funds to bonds to budgets, you name it, police, fire, public works, it you is. It. Okay, I appreciate that, but uh, and one thing I told Angela, I said, uh, we don't get this much interest at a council meeting. Would this not be great if people come to a council meeting and 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 came and became part of the process like this? I mean, I I, I applaud all of you being here tonight, and and thank you for coming. Just not the candidates. And I think you know this uh, this is what we you know we would welcome with open arms more. Uh, the public attending more and and uh, if you had reservations about coming before throw that out the door uh, we got an open door policy we're transparent we want you here so if that's you know you know that's all I got to say yes sir did somebody say something said thank you oh you're welcome sir okay uh, if there's no other discussion, I now will entertain a motion. I make the motion for for uh, Monty Blue to replace uh, to replace the open vacant seat. Okay, I'll second that. We have a motion on the floor and a second. Call the roll. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Go uh, Yay. Commissioner Goss. Yay. <laughs> Can I vote? Only in the case of a tie. Oh, come on. I told you I wanted to express my opinion. You're so happy that you don't have to vote. You're not God, I here. am. <laughs> okay, is there any other business before the council tonight? Anybody else? Public comment? If not, I'll entertain a motion to it. Sir, I, I didn't mean to uh, ignore you. Do, you. do you have anything? You're... You're fine? You're fine. I'm fine? <laughs> I'm not fine. <laughs> this has really been this has been a tough decision for these guys. It it is and they're they'll they'll think about it, but uh but uh but thank you. Thanks guys. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Got a motion to and a second. Call the roll. Commissioner Hightower. Yay. Commissioner Webb. Yay. Commissioner Goss Yay. and Mayor Butler. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is happening. Mayor Rinella, we'll let you vote this time. <laughs> uh, yay. <laughs> Good